Hello guys and welcome to the Norwich Tactical Channel. In this video I'm gonna show you how to mount the scope properly to your sniper rifle, to AHE or to any airsoft gun and then I'm also gonna show you how to sear it. Now the reason why I'm making this video is because very often you know I'm at the field and I see a guy with a cool sniper rifle and I say man can I try a sniper rifle and he says yeah I can try it but you know it kind of shoots to the right and I'm not very really happy with you know what it does and I take the sniper rifle I shoulder it and I look through the scope and I just go okay I, I understand everything already the scope is tilted on the rifle which means that the crosshair is not aligned with the axis of the gun and that means that you know when you make the crosshair straight the gun is tilted and then your shots will be curving. You know, I rack the gun, I try to keep it leveled while the crosshair is like tilted in there. I take a shot and it's just not zero. The hop up is not adjusted properly. And this is why I think this video is really important because a lot of people don't use the full potential of the sniper rifle because they miss small little details when it comes to mounting the scope. So first of all, I'm gonna show you how to mount it. And then later we're gonna go outside. I'm gonna show you how to adjust the hop up and then how to zero the gun. Okay, first of all, how do you mount the scope? Uh, many scopes come, you know, disassembled, just like the Norwich scope. You have your scope rings, the scope itself, and then you just kind of go, okay, where am I going to mount my scope? Do I mount it, you know, here or here, or do I mount it here? Because you have all of this rail space. Now, before you start with choosing the right location, you first have to adjust the length of your rifle to your body. General rule of thumb is you want to have it adjusted to a length where you put the butt pad into your elbow, and when you pull the trigger, your finger should have a 90 degree angle. Now this comes from the real steel world and it's a good rule of thumb for airsoft as well. But in airsoft you still have to keep in mind that it's not just about the angle of your trigger finger, but it's also about how easy is it to actually rack your gun. Because the shorter you adjust it, the harder it will be to uh, rack the bolt, you know, when I make it super short and it's kind of like this, I will get a really awkward angle on my arm and it's not gonna be very pleasant. So if you're having struggles to compress hard springs, it helps a lot to just adjust the length to pull here. Just try it and see what works best for you. So this is the very first step. Once this is done and you know that for me, it's quite comfortable, the angle is pretty much right. So this step is done. Now you want to adjust the position of the scope according to the eye relief and according to the length of your stock. Therefore, you just take the scope rings, you mount them randomly, you know, somewhere in the gun where you think, you know, that could be, that could be a good position. So one goes here, one goes here. And now you put the scope into the rings and you just, you know, look down the scope and you want to find a position where when you just lean into the gun, you have the perfect eye relief. So this is too far away. I want to bring it slightly to the back. So now when I bring up the gun and I just lean into the stock, it's the perfect distance between my eye and the scope. Now here you also have to keep in mind that your head is in different positions depending if you're prone or if you're standing. But as an airsoft sniper, you're usually standing or kneeing and there your head will be just like that. But again, when you're lying, you usually bring your head further to the front. So don't bring the scope too far back because otherwise uh, when you lie, you kind of have to, you know, bring your head back and that's just really annoying. Okay, once you found this position, just remember how it is. And now what you want to do is you want to get the scope rings as far apart from each other as possible. Because obviously when you bring them close together, you know, there's a very big lever on the scope and then you can lose your zero when you bump into something. So try to get them as far apart as possible. Um, so here I have one more slot to bring it back and also one more slot here to bring it forward. So I'm gonna do it real quick. You know, this really depends on how long the pipe of your scope is. There's really long scope pipes and there's also shorter ones. Here on the Norwich scope, it's a shorter one. So now we're gonna see if it still fits perfectly. So now with the maximum distance, I couldn't bring the rings further apart anymore because you know, the pipe just isn't any longer. And now we want to close the rings and please don't do this the other way around. You don't want to first mount the scope rings and then put it onto the rail because then maybe the distance is not right to the slots and maybe they are slightly off. So when you tighten it, everything is, you know, just misaligned. So first of all, you want to properly tight the scope rings onto the rail, just like that. And now it's time to screw the top of the scope rings into place. But here, don't tighten them properly yet, you know, just tighten them slightly because next we're gonna have to make sure that the scope is leveled on the gun.
Okay, now I can still move the scope and you're gonna see that on top of the scope, some of them have a little dot, which indicates the very top of the scope. Uh, it's the case here on this Novich product. Other scopes might have it as well. On airsoft scopes, however, be careful with those dots. Uh, you know, there's always manufacturing tolerance and maybe it's slightly off, but it's still a nice reference. So now you tie the rings in a way that you can, you know, still move the scope, but it doesn't uh, wobble inside the rings. Okay, now you bring your gun up, you just uh, look through it. And what you want to achieve now is that the vertical crosshair line is exactly in line of the rifle. And that's really, really important. If your scope is slightly canted on your gun and you're gonna, you know, align your scope according to the trees, you know, which are perfectly vertical, your rifle will be tilted and then your shots will be curving. To do this, uh, again, I just look through the rifle and try to get it right in this position. And what you can also do is just look through the scope from the back and make sure that it's, you know, that it goes perfectly through the axis of the bolt handle here and that it's perfectly aligned. Okay, now the crosshair is aligned with the axis of the gun and now you can tight down the rings. Make sure to not touch the scope anymore because you might just misalign something again. Okay, and this is how you mount your scope to your rifle. Now it's not gonna wobble anymore, it's on there rock solid. And now we're gonna head out and gonna adjust the hop up and then we're gonna zero the scope. Now you wanna adjust the crosshair of your scope to the trajectory of your BB. A mistake a lot of people make is first of all adjusting the scope and then they kinda try to bring the hop up into the scope, but that's totally wrong. You first want to get the maximum range and maximum performance out of your as of sniper rifle, or that's also the same with HEs or pistols, it's really always the same concept, but it's especially true for as of sniper rifles because you want to outrange the enemy. So first you adjust the hop up and then you adjust the crosshairs of your scope to the trajectory of the perfect hop up. When it comes to hop up, there's different preferences. A lot of people want a flat trajectory, but some people want to have uh, quite a massive over hop that kind of looks like this then, you know, we have this peak of the trajectory can be a problem for some people because it means that if you see somebody, it doesn't mean that you can hit him because the BB is not flying flat. You know, it has this curve and then maybe it hits a branch or something in the forest, which you didn't keep in mind. So different people prefer different things. But in this video, we're gonna do one of the, you know, average settings that the normal airsoft sniper would use on the field. Now, in order to adjust your hop up, you don't want to be looking through your scope. You want to look along the side of your rifle because this gives you a better idea about the trajectory. Um, I'm just gonna take a shot and again I don't look through the scope, I just look along the side of my barrel. Uh, that's too much hop up as you saw, you know it just goes kind of into the sky and then it falls down and that's too much over hop. Uh, nobody would really play with this. So we're gonna go down a little bit, take another shot. That's very flat already. Uh, this is how I would run it, but just to show you what's not enough hop up, gonna adjust it even further down. This is not enough hop up. You can see the BB is just dropping and you don't use the full potential of your gun. So we're gonna put it back to where it was on the last shot. Let's see one more time, just to make sure. Yes, exactly. Now we have a nice trajectory, you know, flat in the beginning, raises a little bit towards the end and then it drops. Next, you wanna adjust the crosshair of your scope onto the trajectory of your BB. Here you have two wheels on every single scope, you know, no matter which one, you have one for windage here on the side and one for elevation on top. Uh, there's different variants available. There's ones with caps, you have to unscrew those first and then you do a screwdriver. I don't like those too much. I think it's nice that you can adjust it on the field and on the go. Like here in the Novel Scope, you know, even with gloves on, I can uh, adjust it just like that. You will see those arrows on there and the direction. So here's air for right and an arrow. And here you have up for up, obviously, and an arrow as well. I'm gonna talk about those directions later because now I'm gonna take the first shot while looking down my scope. The BB is now to the left and too low of the actual crosshair. First, we're gonna adjust windage and because the BB is too far to the left, we're gonna adjust it according to the error. So here, right, uh, let's do 10 clicks. We're gonna have one more shot. That wasn't enough yet. We adjust it a little bit more. 
five more clicks. And there we go. Now the BB is already flying along the vertical crosshair line, but it's still not there when it comes to the elevation adjustment. So now we're gonna bring the BB further up because it's too low. So we're gonna turn it in the up direction. Here is this arrow and again, about 10 clicks. This is different on every single scope. Some scopes need, you know, five clicks. This one is about 10 clicks for this kind of adjustment. We take the shot and that on. We're perfectly there. Uh, if we would be too high now, you know, we just turn it down a few clicks, but it was perfect. So let's just put it back. So now your gun is perfectly zeroed and you can take those precision shots, but there's still a few more adjustments on different scopes. I'm gonna talk about those as well. Here's the power adjustment on the Norwich scope. That's three to nine. I usually have it set to four times power and I like to keep it there because when you always adjust the power on your scope, you sometimes kind of lose a feeling for distance because the further you zoom in, obviously the closer the target looks. And even if he's 200 meters away and you're always on nine times zoom, but then sometimes on three times zoom, you might think the enemy is close, but actually he's not. So that's how I'm running it. The only reason why I turn up the power of the scope is if I cannot really tell if the guy's on my team, you know, maybe I can't see, is it a red armband or is it just a scope? Or if I'm at a milsim and I have to find out if it's multicam or ATEX or a green camo in order to find out on which fraction the guy is, this is when I turn up power. Also, when it's a foggy day, I sometimes cannot see the trajectory of the BB and you need to do that as a sniper because otherwise you cannot correct for wind and stuff. And then also I just turn it up so that the BB gets bigger and I can see it better in my scope. Here in the back of the novice scope, we have a dioptric adjustment. Uh, not much to say about this, just look through it, uh, turn a little bit, look at the distance that you will be shooting at. So, you know, between 30 and 100 meters, and then just try to get the image up. That's pretty much it. And then in front, you have a parallax error adjustment as well here in the novice scope. It really depends at what distance you're shooting. But what this basically does is it takes away the parallax error of scopes. If you don't know what I'm talking about, parallax error is the effect that gets caused when you move your head, but you don't move out of scope. The crosshair can shift on the target. This is why you have to tell the scope more or less at which distance you're shooting, because then at this distance, the crosshair will not move on the target. It will always be in the same spot, no matter how you look through the scope. And that's, you know, quite important because otherwise you're gonna miss your target as well. Uh, on the novice scope, it's on yards. So just, you know, find out at which distance you're shooting most. In my case, that's 70 meters. I think that's the average range that I'm shooting. Uh, you adjust it there and that's it. Hope you guys could learn something from this video. I know it's been quite basic, but again, just like I said in the beginning of the video, I go out to the field and I see a guy with an SSG. I ask him how he likes it and then I shoot it. And sometimes it just happens that it's the scope, you know, it's tilted in there. That's why it's curving or it's just not zero properly or the hop-up is not adjusted properly. And you just don't use the full potential of your gun if you don't set everything right.